The United Kingdom was undeniably the top dog of the world during the 19th century, a period in which an island of people with dodgy teeth and an addiction to hot leaf water managed to conquer, exploit and subjugate 23% of the world's population and 24% of its landmass. If you choose to play the UK in a Victoria 2 game, Britain is registered as number one on the Great Powers list, where it will remain for the majority of the 100 years that the game is set. But to the dismay of your average Brexit voter, this global dominance did not last forever, and in the turn of the 20th century, it became clear that the days of the British Empire's dominance were numbered. When playing other nations in Vicky 2, what tends to happen is that the AI UK begins to fall behind, often finishing the game around second or third place. It is almost always surpassed by the United States of America, once a fledgling ex-colony, the US after its civil war quietly builds up an unrivalled industry and exits the First World War fairly unscathed. Its European cousins on the other hand are beaten and bruised, and become reliant on the US's booming economy. The UK itself is forced to decolonize more and more, and the fabricated image of fairness and altruism, intrinsic to the myth of imperialism, shatters in the wake of the Great War's atrocities. But what would happen if the British Empire, during its height, clipped the wings of its Atlantic rival? And why didn't it do so, when the USA during the first half of the 19th century was small, weak and decentralised? In anticipation of Paradox's release of Victoria 3, we're going to use its timeless predecessor, and the power of hindsight, to see if the UK could nip its Yankee rivals in the bud in the most historically accurate way possible. That means no pointless conquests, every conflict with the USA has to have some sort of historical justification. Just a disclaimer. This video is delving into the realm of alternate history, so whilst we will attempt to base all decision making on real life historical events, it will be largely based on speculation and opinion. And after all, it's just a bit of fun. No, God! I should also note that the gameplay you will see will be using the historical flavour mod. So, how do we clip the eagle's wings? Besides, it seems almost bizarre to imagine any serious conflict between the USA and Britain in the modern world. The last time the two nations were officially at war was the War of 1812, a war which broke out due to the forced recruitment by the British Royal Navy, in which they'd forced Americans on American vessels who couldn't prove citizenship to join their ranks. It is interpreted in vastly different ways depending on whom you ask. To the Americans, it was spun as a second revolutionary war against its past oppressor. Rock, flag, and eagle. To the British, some viewed it as a necessity to continue this practice known as impressment. Others to protect the Canadian colonies, but due to the UK's engagement in the Napoleonic Wars, many were completely unaware of the war itself. Enough of the curse words, alright? Kiss my sweaty b****s, you fat f To quote the Canadian historian, William Kingsford, The events of the War of 1812 have not been forgotten in England, for they have never been known there. But there are in fact numerous instances in which Britain could have exercised more influence than it did in North America, and war could have potentially broken out between the two nations in the 19th century. It is doubtful that the UK would seriously stand a chance versus the USA after the American Civil War. Whilst it was still vastly superior on the seas, American military theory and technology far surpassed the British. For example, the Americans had experienced quite a sophisticated form of trench warfare, something the European powers wouldn't fully experience for another 50 years. Well then, what about intervention in the American Civil War? Having the USA divided in two would obviously weaken a potential rival, and in this period it was becoming obvious that within a few decades the USA could pose a serious threat to British hegemony. The UK also received its vast majority of cotton from the southern states, giving it an economic reason to intervene too. In game, this is quite straightforward to do, 
CSA Seeds, Britain Allies with CSA, joined the CSA in American Civil War, and Uncle Sam is sent packing home. The result is that the CSA sticks around for longer, and allows Britain to corner the cotton market if it manages to keep it in its sphere of influence. That is, if it remains a secondary power, the UK could equally have accidentally created another rival across the Atlantic. That being said, two rival American powers is still weaker than one united power. The British Empire frequently followed the footsteps of the Romans in its divide and conquer principle, as seen in India, South Africa, and in its meddling with European affairs. So why didn't the UK significantly intervene in the American Civil War in our timeline? Whilst the elites of this time supported the CSA for their traditionalist principles and economic interest in the cotton trade, the overwhelming majority of people did not. Britain at the time was staunchly abolitionist, and opposed slavery wherever it was prevalent. It is an instance where foreign policy was influenced from the bottom up, rather than the other way around, where people were so opposed to slavery that the British elites were unable to act according to their own financial interests. Another disclaimer, we are in no way painting the establishment of 19th century Britain as being in any means morally superior. Because of capitalism, the greedy UK government did end up selling weapons and commissioning warships to the CSA. Sound familiar? However, during the American Civil War, over 90% of trade between the UK and the American states that conceded ceased. Of course, some of this is due to the Union blockades of Confederate ports, but many willingly refused to do business with the slavers. There is a monument to Lincoln in Manchester, whose plaque quotes the man's praise for some of the Mancunian cotton workers who, during the Lancashire Cotton Famine between 1861 to 1865, refused to process American cotton despite the mass unemployment it caused. In a letter written by Abraham Lincoln in 1863, he praised the workers for their sublime Christian heroism, which has not been surpassed in any age or in any country. <laughs> Sorry, I literally have no idea what Abe Lincoln sounds like. <clears throat> so it seems unlikely, then, that the UK would support the CSA in real life. Then, there's the Oregon Treaty of 1846. This was the drawing of the borders between the USA and British Columbia in the Northwest. In-game, you can actually go to war over this by declining to sign the treaty with the US, but once again, it's unrealistic that a full-scale war would have erupted over this land in the farthest corner of the British Empire. Yes, there was the Pig War too, but it was merely a border dispute and would have never evolved into a full-scale war. Before the Oregon Treaty, there was one other possibility for the UK to justify the containment of the USA, one that isn't supported in the game files of Vicky2, and has been consigned to a mere footnote of history. One that is surprising how unknown it is, considering how close the two nations actually got to war. That's right. We're talking about the subject of Texan independence? The area of land we now call Texas was originally controlled by Mexico, and in the early years of the 19th century had an influx of American settlers move in. The Mexican government allowed them to do this, so long as they swear allegiance to them and convert to Catholicism. But over the years, due to the instability of the Mexican government, and the cultural ties the American settlers had with the USA, Texas declared its independence from Mexico, and managed to heroically defend itself against them in 1836. It was independent for 10 years, albeit unrecognised by Mexico, until being officially annexed by the USA in 1846. During this period, it was recognised by various European states, and even opened Texan embassies in France, Belgium, and the Netherlands. Despite the Texans' keenness to be annexed, it took a whole 10 years to become part of the USA because it ended up being such a controversial topic in the US government. On one side, American expansionists deemed it only necessary to annex Texas in the name of Manifest Destiny and to assert American hegemony in the region. On the other, it would likely incite war with Mexico, 
But perhaps more importantly, Texas was a slave economy, with approximately 5,000 slaves in operation. Abolitionists didn't want Texas to join for this reason, and the sectionalists of the northern states believed that if Texas joined, it would be divided into multiple smaller slave states, giving the South a larger majority in Congress. But what has all of this got to do with the UK? Well, if you're the dominant power in the world, with territory on literally every single continent, you're going to be involved with any regional conflict and exert your influence on the area. In fact, there were four good reasons that the UK had to justify their personal interest. Once again, abolition is a big point here. In the 1840s, the idea of global emancipation was at its most zealous in the UK. For example, Victoria's husband, Prince Albert, gave his first ever public speech at the Society for the Extinction of Slave Trade, referring to it as the blackest stain upon civilized Europe. Mexico had abolished slavery in 1869, yet Texas had ignored this, and many British abolitionists felt that they should do something about it before it joined the neighboring slave states in the US. Secondly, there were many wealthy businessmen who held bonds in Mexican debt, and had great financial interest in the region. Mexico owed them money, and so Texas could become a sort of bargaining chip. Thirdly, the region was another cotton producer which could compete with the other southern states rather than integrate with them. This would allow the UK to become less reliant on trade with the US. And finally, the British government had an interest in limiting the US's power and increasing its own in the region. A pro-British Texas would only benefit the UK's dominance in the West Indies. From the Texan perspective, they wanted annexation for protection from Mexico, and because it shared much more cultural ties with their brethren in the US. After all, many of the settlers in Texas had actually travelled from the north to the south, and did not identify as Mexican. The US rejected the Texan proposal for annexation multiple times, but things all came to a head in 1844, when the British Foreign Secretary Lord Aberdeen devised a plan between France, Britain and Mexico to guarantee the borders of Texas, meaning that if the US were to push for annexation, the result would be war. Since Texas's main reason for being pro-annexation was protection from Mexico, it would not be as much of a pressing matter if its borders were guaranteed by the UK. Perhaps then, the Texan government would warm to the prospect of remaining independent. The problem was, Mexico stubbornly refused to recognise Texas, claiming it as her own, and France, whilst also interested in an independent Texas, had no inclination to go to war over it. When the Americans found out that the pesky British were meddling in their affairs once again, Congress understandably warmed to the proposal of annexing Texas. Lord Aberdeen thought it unwise to go it alone and backed away, and by 1845, the US accepted the proposal for annexation. The intervention by the British is sparingly documented in Texas's decades-long history, so it is unsurprising that none of this conflict between the US and the UK exists in Victoria too. As for the cotton market competition, Texas isn't much of a competitor in-game. So we had to be a little creative. In this alternate universe, the Foreign Secretary of the UK makes an agreement to help defend Mexican land should the US invade, so long as the Mexicans recognise Texas's independence and British influence over it. Mexico is less stubborn this time, and agrees, favouring the prospect of having the British as their allies over expanding their already overstrained empire. And rather than having France's support, the UK gained support from... Belgium and Portugal. Hey, it was the best I could do. In 1842, a claim to puppet Texas to prevent annexation was fabricated, and the UK, Mexico, Portugal, and Belgium declared war on the USA. Using a nifty mod called the Vicky 2 War Analyzer, we can find out that it would have been the worst war yet for the US causing a death toll of 220,000. Economically, it was also a bit of a disaster for the UK. But let's be honest, 
I'm sure the British people wouldn't be too chuffed at a war against the USA due to cultural ties and the damage done to trade between the two countries. Perhaps in this alternate universe, the war could be spun by the government as a liberation of the Texan people from a larger aggressor wanting to annex their country, despite the Texan people originally being cool with this. After all, communications aren't what they are today and a fake news agenda could be pushed against the Americans, depicting them as the baddies in this conflict. Furthermore, a humanitarian case could be made to limit the reaches of slavery in the South. So in this game, the UK won and Texas was now an independent, albeit British satellite, nation. If something like this were to have happened in our timeline, there's every chance that the British would have been bolder in keeping the USA nothing more than a regional power. Between 1838 to 1846 for instance, there had been talks between Mexican diplomats and British businessmen about the prospect of selling California and a new British commercial colony to be set up similar to the Hudson's Bay Company in Canada and the South Australian Company in, you guessed it, Australia. This was put to rest by Lord Aberdeen in our timeline, just like the question of Texas was, as he believed the time for colonial enterprise had passed and it would be multiplying the liabilities of misunderstanding and collisions with foreign powers. If Texas had gone differently, perhaps Mexico in its victory over the Americans would have happily sold California off to these friendly British businessmen. And if California was under some sort of British control or influence, perhaps the Oregon Treaty would have gone differently too. By refusing to compromise with the Americans, the UK would gain nearly full control over the West Coast. With this in mind, I returned to my rather chaotic Victoria 2 game and proceeded to bully the United States of America into submission. When the US chooses the Manifest Destiny decision, it immediately triggers the Mexican-American War. Unfortunately, if you prevent the US from sphering or conquering Texas, it is unable to do this. So again, I had to get creative and use console commands to trigger the event. Of course, as the UK and Mexico were now staunch allies, Britain had to guarantee the Mexican border. Furthermore, the California Republic became independent in the process, and after the USA's defeat, California was swiftly sphered by the British. Then, when the Oregon Treaty was raised, of course the cocky Brits, with such a larger foothold in the Americas, refused the deal. The British and Americans were at war for the third time in 10 years. This time, however, the war exhaustion for the US became too much and the people rose up and rebelled. Interestingly, they abolished slavery, preventing the game from ever starting the American Civil War. The UK now controlled the entire west coast of North America. The USA had failed to conquer the continent and Mexico wisely kept out of Texas and California, whose independence and markets were guaranteed by the crown. So. This completely accurate historic simulation was a success. The USA's power and influence was contained and the dominance of the British Empire over the Americans would persist. Oh, until 1903 when its industrial score surpassed the UK's and continued to rise until the end of the game. Turns out, if you leave the game long enough, the Yankees always win. Realistically, it seems unlikely that the UK would always hold on to its gains in America if the fate of Texas would have gone differently. There would probably come a point of independence for British Columbia, California and Texas similarly to what happened in Canada, South Africa and Australia. Perhaps then they would join the United States of America, or perhaps the cultural identities of these places would be too strong for the people to want to give up their independence. California and Texas are rich in natural resources to exploit and keep their booming economies afloat. And by the 1900s, they probably wouldn't want a bigger power taking control anyway. Perhaps instead, they would form a sort of alliance similar to that of the European Union instead. But we can always wonder if in some distant alternate universe, there is a British Texan wearing a 10 gallon hat and sipping a cup of Yorkshire tea, wondering what his life would be like if he were an American.